everyone, and I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, if you're on my mailing list, which if you're not, I hope you'll join. There's a link right below or watch me regularly. You know that in 2023, starting on January 1st, we have a new type of lineup here on my daily show, Chef AJ Live, which has been live every day for almost three years now. Instead of doing a different guest 365 days of a year, we have 28 distinct guests who are previous guests on the show that have a regular slot on the show. So the first Monday of the month is Dr. McDougall, for example. The second, the first Tuesday of the month is Straight Talk with Dr. Doug Lyle and so on. If you're on my list, you already know what this fantastic lineup is, but this is now the first Saturday of the month. So we have a fabulous show. It's called The Culinary Medicine show starring Dr. Colin Zhu, who is also known as the chef doc. He's a doctor and a chef, and he is going to do a fabulous recipe presentation today. Please welcome him to the show. I'm so happy you you took the, we, we sent out an email to every press guest and over a hundred applied. And I'm so happy you wanted to do this because I really, I love, I mean, we have doctors and we have chefs, but I think you're the only one that's both. <laughs> I probably know all the other ones. <laughs> There's not that many of us. So, and, um, you know, having that evolution is, uh, it seems obvious, right? Like Hippocrates says, you know, let, uh, you know, thy food be thy medicine, right? Um, but at the same time, you know, we definitely need more of that. So, um, Chef AJ, thank you so much for having me on your show. Happy holidays, happy new year, happy new year to all everyone that's watching or watching after the live show. And I am really, really grateful and humbled that, you know, um, I have a monthly uh, slot on your show. So thank you very much, number one. So <laughs> oh, yeah, I am so excited. You know, I mean, think about it. Like, you know, a doctor has to have some skill, like especially a surgeon with a knife and so does a chef. So I think that some of the skills are kind of similar. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, for those uh, in the audience that's uh, never met or uh, heard of me before, I'm Dr. Colin Zhu. Um, I'm a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. And um, so a little bit of background um, uh, on me. I'm originally from New Jersey. I'm based in uh, Southern California right now um, in Orange County. And uh, I'm, you know, trained in family medicine. I'm board certified in lifestyle medicine um, and family. And I also specialize in culinary medicine. And so you may be wondering how in the world did the two combinations of professions, you know, kind of came about. And so um, it wasn't accidental. Um, it was very uh, pointed, uh, very strategic. And uh, essentially, I came from a mother that practices uh, traditional Chinese medicine, still practicing over four decades. Um, and so she kind of groomed me um, in uh, holism, you know, looking at the patient and person in a very holistic, you know, manner. I didn't come from a long line of MDs. And the three values that she taught me was integrity, authenticity, um, compassion. And, um, and so I, you know, took those values into school. And little that I know, like a lot of my colleagues, we weren't really taught diet, food, nutrition, and lifestyle. And so I found, found it very, um, you know, poignant that everyone that walked through our door, whether it was a, a reason for a visit of a cough or low back pain, um, had some sort of lifestyle, you know, risk factor attached to it, right? So uh, the top seven causes of death in our country um, are chronic lifestyle related uh, disease burden. And so I took it upon myself to make a whole bunch of detours. I went to culinary school um, in Manhattan. Um, I went to a uh, health coaching uh, school in Man Manhattan as well. And um, I did all that um, in between medical school and residency. And so I use that to kind of enhance what I do now. And so ever since uh, starting practice in 15, um, as you can tell, I'm a little bit younger uh, in terms of, uh, you know, your speakers. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I use that to do demonstrations, workshops. Um, you know, I speak at conferences. Um, you know, and doing things like this, you know, virtually since the pandemic. So um, that's where I'm at right now. Fantastic. Stephanie's wondering if you're in a new kitchen. She says it looks like a new kitchen. <laughs> yeah. So actually, since uh, I think I've been on, on your channel a couple of times and uh, the last time I was in L.A. So, you know, I had since moved down to Orange County. And so, yes, I am in a new kitchen. Um, so it yeah, looks, it's a, looks beautiful with the cabinets. The white cabinets are stunning. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And so, um, you know, even even, uh, you know, we're, you know, nice cooking board um, and I have, you know, a whole mise en place next to me. 
Um, so yes, to answer your question. Um, so yeah, if you're ready, I'm ready to get started on uh, today's uh, recipe. I'd love it. So today, um, you know, I think uh, Chef Adrian will disperse uh, recipes, um, whether in the show notes or, you know, maybe through your email list. Um, but today we're uh, making Asian style tofu lettuce boats. OK, um, and I chose this recipe because it's very fun to do. Um, it's very colorful. Um, it's great for. Uh, dinner parties, potlucks, um, things like that. And, um, you know, and it's, you know, very, very uh, fun to do. So um, it's also fresh um, and we utilize a lot of plant-based fare. Okay. And I know that uh, Chef AJ's show, you know, uh, it's supposed to be vegan, no oil. And so we're encouraging a lot of, you know, whole food, you know, whole intact, you know, plant food and without the use of oil. And I'm sure a lot of guests, you know, kind of go into that, you know, on your show. Um, so I'm just going to kind of show you uh, my mise en place. Uh, my mise en place is basically French to get everything in place. One of the basic, you know, early uh, things that we're taught in school is really getting everything in one place. And I think this is great for just in life, <laughs> you know, for like time management, for organization, um, you know, things like that. And it really, um, you know, gives us a good skill in terms of, um, you know, just really having everything in one place. So, you know, I'm going to kind of switch my cameras ar around. So, um, so one of the things we have is um, on the top of our list is uh, lettuce, butter lettuce. And so, you know, we're, I chose these, these are actually called little gems. Um, and basically these form our boats. Uh, so basically, you know, they're fun, you know, they're colorful, you know, if you have kids, you can kind of help them to participate, right? I always encourage my um, patients, my audience members to cook with their family because it's not so much just enriching uh, nutrition and nourishment for yourself, but it's also enriching, you know, your own relationships with one another, right? Um, you know, relationships, um, which is a whole different topic, um, is to me um, is as important, if not more important than what you put in your body, because, you know, uh, there's a Harvard adult uh, development study that says that, you know, having good positive relationships and the quality of these relationships is the number one predictor for um, your overall health and longevity. So, um, you know, so I encourage people when they go back into the kitchen to actually cook with others. And that reinforces, you know, rapport and relationship amongst your family members, spouse, romantic partners, what have you, friends, right? So these are little gems, um, you know, where they are the boats um, to everything. And then we just kind of scoop everything and put them in these, you know, crevices. You can use, um, you know, other types of, uh, you know, lettuce leaves to kind of make uh, larger ones, but, you know, you could, you know, this is one of the ones that I chose, okay? So uh, we'll put this aside. We're also going to be using uh, red cabbage. Um, red cabbage is literally this guy, okay? I mean, I, I don't know if your camera can see this, but it is such a beautiful, bright, you know, vibrant color, okay? Cabbage comes from, um, is, comes from the cruciferous family, right? Um, uh, it, it's, its roots, uh, you know, Latin is uh, caput, or it also means head. It looks like a head. Uh, it has a lot of, uh, you know, anti-cancer uh, properties um, called glucosinolates, right? And a fun fact is back in the day, Romans actually used cabbage as a hangover cure, uh, which I thought was a fun fact. So um, it has more vitamin C uh, than, uh, you know, oranges. It all ha also has calcium and vitamin A, okay? And what makes it red is the phenol uh, phenolytic um, uh, compounds, which is part of the uh, antioxidant um, and that's what makes it so great, okay? So many different varieties. The next on our list is a jicama, okay? The jicama um, is a Central American root vegetable, okay? Uh, they kind of taste similar to water chestnuts. Um, Chef AJ, have you ever used jicama in your, um, in your I, uh, cooking? Yes, well, I don't cook with it. What I do, it, they do this in Mexico, Rancho La Puerta, where I teach is you make fries and they cut it into a fry shape with a French fry cutter and then they marinate 
marinated in things like chili powder and lime juice. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, very, very common in, in Mexican fare. 90% water, the rest of it is, you know, fiber. Um, and it has a very subtle, you know, sweetness to it. Um, so, and that act comes from inulin. Um, and what's great, great about this is that when you're cooking with it, it doesn't actually lose its crunchiness, which I really, really, you know, enjoy. Okay. Next up on the list is mushrooms. Okay. Um, these are baby Bella, uh, mushrooms. Okay. Mushrooms. You can probably dedicate a whole episode just talking about mushrooms. And, um, um, on my podcast, um, I, um, I interviewed a mushroom guy. <laughs> he told me all kinds of stuff about, you know, foraging and wild mushrooms. And he had multiple, multiple trips going back and forth to China. He has his own mushroom company. So I thought that was a really good um, uh, interview. And so mushrooms, um, a fun fact in Asia, um, especially uh, reishi mushrooms, uh, is thought to increase longevity. Um, so that's a fun fact for you. But what most people don't know is that this is actually the natural version of MSG. Okay. So MSG is mono, uh, sodium, uh, glutamate, right. And so obviously synthetic is man-made and it's not, you know, great for us, but it actually has a natural source of glutamic acid. And so it's one of the great plant-based fare that gives, gives us that umami and savory, you know, flavoring, uh, which we all love. So, and, uh, next on our list is, uh, tofu. Okay, so here I just kind of like patted it dry uh, because I took it out of the box. But uh, tofu, which we're going to uh, kind of start uh, cutting up. Um, uh, tofu is great. Um, I hope a lot of people uh, eat uh, soy or incorporate soy within their uh, diet. And uh, what's great is, uh, Chef A.D., do you have uh, someone on your show that talks about uh, tofu with, uh, in terms of like, cancer and breast cancer and things like that. Do you guys, do you have a dedicated soy person? Well, we've had Dr. Barnard on several times who's talked mm -hmm. about how it is actually beneficial because so many people like hear from their doctor that it's not beneficial when it actually, it is for even breast cancer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just as a reminder, you know, I love Dr. Neil Barnard and he's the uh, founder of uh, uh, Physicians Committee. Uh, for responsible medicine, uh, great educator, great uh, speaker as well. Uh, basically, you know, he's absolutely right. You know, um, so soy contains uh, pseudo um, estrogen. Um, and what it is, is that in terms of, you know, breast cancer, breast cancer has, uh, you know, the breast tissues has like two uh, receptors, alpha and beta receptors. And so um, think about, you know, alpha as in, you know, it promotes uh, cancer and then beta receptors, it, you know, uh, blocks or inhibits the promotion of cancer. And so what soy does is that it actually, you know, blocks it. Um, and so, you know, that is what's so great about, you know, soy, you know, there's a, it, what it does is that regular consumption um, decreases 30% um, of breast cancer for women and regular consumption for men decreases 29% for prostate uh, risk. Um, so those are, you know, the fun facts, you know, for um, that as well. So I'm just going to kind of cut it up and put this in a container um, so we can have that going on. Do you do a lot of uh, tofu, uh, use a lot of uh, uh, soy in your own cooking, Chef Adrian? You know, I don't because I've been allergic, but I'm working with an immunologist now to do micro challenges with foods that I've previously been allergic to and hoping that mm. I can introduce it someday. Nice, I, nice. I, yeah, I hear you can get pumpfu and hempfu though, tofu that's made out of hemp seeds and pumpkin seeds. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's so interesting how, um, how many different things are coming into the market. I'm sure you know, um, from your over, you've been vegan for, I know for many, many decades, and I'm sure that, you know, when you're looking all these different types of marketing trends, some of them are just like super wacky. And then some of them, you know, you're like, oh, that can actually be yeah, not, not so bad. So. I think um, I've been vegan longer than you've been alive, Dr. Zhu. <laughs> <laughs> 45 years. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> and Colleen is pointing out, and I'm sorry, I forgot that Dr. Christy Funk has been on this show several times, the breast surgeon, and she talks mm. about the benefits of soy. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I know you have amazing, amazing, you know, guests um, on your show. 
Um, so basically what we're doing is I have uh, cut up the tofu. I just kind of generally cut up uh, uh, the jicama um, and the tofu um, basically into a small medium dice. Um, and so because it's going to be sauteed, uh, stir fried sauteed um, into, um, into everything. So that's what we're going to do. Um, just a little bit of cutting action for you guys. A little bit, of, uh, everything else has already been mise en place. Where did you go to culinary school, Dr. Zhu? I went to um, uh, the Natural Gourmet Institute. Well, that's uh, a good one. I hear lots of great things about it. Yeah, the founder is uh, Dr. Anne-Marie Colvin. Um, she has a, a PhD a pioneer, uh, such a pioneer. She's no longer living um, anymore, um, but she is such a pioneer. Um, and it's a very interesting and different uh, culinary school. Um, and when I chose uh, culinary schools and did my research, I didn't want to go to a traditional one where, you know, classically, you know, all great schools, um, but I didn't want to start off my foundation with, um, you know, just emphasizing um, you know, sugar, butter, fat, salt, you know, making everything taste great is very, very important. But I wanted a place where they really concentrated on being health supportive. And so um, I went to the Natural Gourmet because that's what it did. It was mainly health supportive and it was plant predominant. It wasn't entirely uh, vegan. Uh, they had options to learn about it, but mostly it was taught with, um, on traditional um, Asian cuisines. And so that was a foundation. Um, so, and it was really, really cool. So and you, it did had, this, you did this after going to medical school, right? Correct. Yes. Yes. I did this after going to medical school. Um, it had since got acquired by the Institute for Culinary Education, which is also another great school um, as well. Wouldn't it be cool, like, you know how in medical school people pick their specialties, like yours, one of yours is lifestyle medicine, if they had a culinary medicine track right in medical school? Well, you know what, it's funny you say that because um, there's a lot of um, our, my professional organization, uh, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, um, you know, they have the ability, they have created a lot of um, content uh, for medical students, residents, um, and, uh, they get to learn all about lifestyle medicine, which focuses on the six pillars, um, diets, physical movement, um, avoiding smoking, alcohol, what have you, um, concentrating on, uh, restorative sleep, social connections, um, and self-care and stress management. So, um, they do actually have that curriculum and we're doing we're like full steam ahead in terms of making sure that medical students, medical residents get this education. And this evolved, honestly, with over the pandemic. I didn't have this when I was in school, hence why I had to make so many detours. Um, but now um, we've received a lot of money from you know, uh, private and large uh, donors to be able to fund these grants and to build out these curriculum. And um, yeah, we were also at the White House uh, nutrition and hunger conference um, uh, that was held uh, recently. And then we also paired up with uh, Eric Adams, who is uh, the current uh, New York City uh, mayor. And um, we've donated uh, $44 million in lifestyle medicine educational grant. So literally, there's free uh, continuing education for every single New York City healthcare provider. And that news was literally last month. <laughs> so that, that's huge news. Um, so yes, there's a lot of things um, going on um, that, you know, we're really, really stoked about. Okay. So, Great. Uh, let's see. So we got the lettuce, tofu. Oh, uh, let me do some uh, mushrooms. Okay. So mushrooms, um, you know, going back to uh, mushrooms in general, there's just so many, you know, varieties. Um, I'm just going to rough cut this, uh, nothing fancy about it, um, just for time efficiency. Um, you ever go to a P.F. Chang's? 
I actually have not been to P.F. Chang's. <laughs> I haven't have been, been there in, ma- not in many years, but I remember they had something, they they had really delicious lettuce cups as an appetizer, and I'm yeah. pretty sure they were based on tofu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's great about mushrooms and tofu um, is that they, they are such versatile um, ingredients. Um, and so, you know, they, mushrooms, um, you know, obviously add, you know, the savory component uh, to everything. Um and tofu absorbs um, a lot of the flavorings, um, and uh, mushrooms also, you know, absorb as well. Um, in terms of mushrooms, you do definitely want to util- uh, use it as fast as possible because they do oxidize pretty quickly. Um, so let's see, we got this. Uh, let's. Is it, it true that here. mushrooms should be cooked before consumed? That's what some of the doctors have said. You know what? There are um, suspected trace. Um, it's good that you uh, actually brought this up. Um, there are suspected like trace carcinogens um, within mushrooms. Um, so, but it actually um, is turned off once you cook it. Um, so, I mostly eat my mushrooms cooked. Um, mushrooms is huge in Asian style cooking. Um, I come from I come from a family of. Um, you know, Southern Chinese, um, you know, regions. And so we use mushrooms a lot. Um, but yeah, we cook, we don't, we actually don't eat a lot of things raw. I think we've had this conversation. Before. Yes. That, that like big salads and smoothies are not typical. of No, Asian no, cuisine. no. We don't actually have a lot of things, you know, we have some things pickled, right. Uh, fermented, but we don't actually consume any, you know, a lot of things raw. So a salad is not, that's not a thing, you know, overseas. So all right, so we got jicama, we got the carrots. Um, let's see, do, 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 do. Okay, we can start getting cooking. So uh, let me start to transport you. There we go. So because we're not doing uh, oil here, um, I'm actually going to be doing um, a little bit of vegetable broth. Have you ever made ma pao tofu? Ma pao tofu, yeah. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, it uses a lot of um, spices um, from the Sichuan province, uh, very specific chilies, um, and a very, very popular uh, dish. Um, so we're just going to put this on high medium uh, to kind of get everything, you know, going. Put everything here. We should tell people that you do lifestyle medicine consults. They might not know that, you know, in addition to making them a nice tasty dish, you can actually be a doctor for them. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so basically, um, basically half of my time, you might be asking what does, you know, Dr. Collins do? <laughs> um, so basically half of my time is clinical care. So I see patients virtually. Um, I work from home and uh, I see my patients virtually. And then um, uh, half, the other half of the time is really focusing on the chef doc. And so um, in terms of the clinical care, um, I work with in conjunction with plant-based telehealth, uh, which you had, you know, Dr. Nikki Davis uh, yesterday. I had no uh, idea was, that you were with that organization. It's like two in a row. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Let me turn down this flame. Um, and so, yes, uh, we uh, work together on this fabulous team. Um, and uh, let me just concentrate and put this here. And so we see, we take consultations uh, domestically and also internationally, except we can't do... Um, you know, um, actual, we can't prescribe or do lab orders internationally, but, uh, you know, we can see almost, you can think of it as like a coach, you know, coaching type of, uh, you know, um, aspect. Um, so we see patients there, we do lifestyle medicine consults. Um, so if you don't know what lifestyle medicine is, um, I kind of, I talked about it uh, a little bit before it concentrates on the six pillars. Um, we have, 30 minute appointments, one hour, um, you know, appointments. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm licensed in 10 States. Um, and I'm able to see patients all over the country. Um, you know, the, which license it's important, uh, to know, um, uh, because 
uh, you know, we can only see patients where they're physically at. Um, that's how telemedicine uh, laws work. Um, but yeah, I have uh, 10 options, 10 states uh, for your viewers if they want to have a lifestyle medicine consultations. And so the question is, what, what do we do? You know, uh, we basically take your history um, in terms of where you've been, where you're currently are and where you're going, right? And you can see me as a, your lifestyle medicine cheerleader, advocate of your overall health and wellness journey. We don't just talk about food as medicine, but we go over, you know, how much exercise and physical activity you get per week, how much sleep you're getting, what is your, what is the quality of your relationships, um, you know, um, in terms of your spouse, in terms of your family, how that, you know, plays in. Um, I have a lot of, I have a lot of patients, you know, whenever we talk about cooking, we talk about, okay, you know, you're getting back in, in the kitchen, who's doing the shopping, who's doing the cooking, right? Um, and then I get a lot of information in terms of just that, because, you know, sometimes they'll say, oh, doc, I've been, you know, vegan or, you know, plant-based for X number of days, months, or years, but the rest of my family doesn't want to join me, or they don't like, you know, what I cook, or, you know, they're kind of, you know, trepidatious, uh, trepidatious and hesitant about, you know, everything which is fine, but that also tells me, you know, um, their relationship and, you know, how, you know, they go about, you know, things. And then uh, we talk about stress management. Uh, we talk about hydration. We talk about, you know, your sleep. Um, so we talk about a lot of things, not just food as medicine. And of course, you know, I, you know, dedicate a lot in terms of, you know, the kitchen, how are you navigating the supermarket, your pantry, your fridge, um, you know, things like that. So, um, but yeah, um, in the show notes, um, you know, um, you know, check out, you know, what state you're in. Um, and then, you know, you can book an appointment. Um, you just go to, um, uh, my website, which is uh, brand new, uh, new, new design website. And, uh, you know, I would like to publicly announce that, uh, you know, we're also launching an app. So, um, you know, uh, that is a companion, uh, to everything. So, um, so yeah. So basically in terms of everything, um, what you're doing is that you're sauteing, you're looking for a light, you know, brown, you know, color, uh, to everything here. Um, you throw in the tofu first, you throw in the mushrooms, mushrooms, depending on the type of mushrooms tend to be whittled down more soft. Um, you know, they tend to be a little bit more translucent um, when they're cooked down properly. Um, as you can see, it was a lot of uh, larger chunks and then, uh, you know, it's getting smaller. So uh, from here, um, I'm going to throw in my uh, jicama, okay, that we just, you know, diced up. And then... Um, There's a question about mushrooms. I just saw it. Somebody said, could... Uh, it, um, Julia says, what's your opinion on canned mushrooms? Are they acceptable? And Melissa says, what about dried mushrooms? Um, canned mushrooms. I, I've never had canned mushrooms before. I didn't know. I guess you can technically can anything, right? Um, so I try my best. Um, I try my best to, let me just look at you guys. I try my best to, uh, I try my best to buy things fresh, um, fresh uh, whenever possible, in season, um, the least amount of food miles. If you don't know what food miles is, is basically the number of miles that that particular fruit or vegetable had to travel before arriving to your grocery store. And that makes a difference, okay? Having a certain type of produce five miles down the street at your you know, local farmer's market is much different than something traveling from Chile or Argentina, right? Um, and uh, so canned, honestly, produce uh, mushrooms can be found all season and like all year, all, all year round. So I don't, I don't know the top of my head, the pros and cons to it. I like to have things fresh as possible. When things are cans, they tend to impart like a certain taste, depending on what type of a preservative is, is you know, with it, right? Um, so to me, um, you know, from a culinary point of view, taste, you know, is very important. And so, um, I try to, uh, make sure that, uh, I get things fresh. 
your other question about dried, um, dried is good. Dried is you know good for storage um, in the Asian markets and Chinese markets. We actually have a lot of mushrooms um, that are actually dried, and so you know um, we just rehydrate them. Like for example, we buy a lot of shiitake mushrooms that are dried. So, you know, we buy them dry and then we just rehydrate them. Okay. Wash them really well. And then, you know, we rehydrate them. So, um, yeah, I've never actually had canned mushrooms. So that's actually interesting. I buy, we buy them fresh, um, or dry. So I hope that answers your question. Thanks. And there's one more mushroom question from Jay. Could eating cooked mushrooms exacerbate an existing yeast infection? Uh, that's uh, a good question. Um, I don't find that to be true per se. Um, I would say yeast, and this is a whole nother topic as well. Yeast uh, comes a lot from really having processed, refined, simple carbohydrates. Um, and, uh, because yeast, you know, feed off of that, you know, a lot. Um, just so, so you know, we I can't see you anymore. Uh, what you're doing below. Just, oh, that's, sure. yeah. yeah. Sorry, just we people want to see, and they also want to know what kind of pan that is. Uh, this is a ceramic pan. Um, so I like to do ceramic or stainless steel. Um, so you can, I don't know the brand off the top of my head, but, uh, you know, it's a ceramic, uh, nonstick pan. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Okay, so for the recipe, um, it calls for, you can do soy sauce. Um, I give the options of doing tamari. Um, you know, you could, I'm doing liquid aminos, okay? Um, do you use any Bragg, uh, Bragg uh, products, um, Chef AJ? I, I've used them in the past. I find that um, there's something even lower in sodium called coconut secret or coconut aminos that are like that, but just seem to have less sodium. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, so obviously we're not doing added salt, but you know, you have to think about, so this, you know, I'm so just eyeballing, um, obviously, de you know, going on what you have, um, whether you have hypertension, high, you know, uh, high blood pressure, um, kidney issues, you definitely want to pay attention to this sodium, um, in general, you don't want to really go over 23, hundred milligrams per day. If you have kidney disease, um, you know, uh, if you have kidney disease, I would, you know, go even lower, of course, consult your, um, you know, consult your uh, physician, um, as well. So I'm going to make some, uh, you know, fresh OJ. Okay. Uh, because the recipe calls for it. Um, so So we're doing this to kind of, you know, add another layer. Um, you know, so you have the savory and saltiness from the aminos, right? Um, what's the difference between soy, you know, soy sauce, um, tamari? Uh, tamari is, uh, you know, gluten-free. Um, and so that's the, that's the biggest difference. Um, and, and then the aminos, it also uses soy and, um, uh, and, and vegetable protein. Okay. So we got some fresh, you know, OJ here, we're going to transport you over again. All right. So this adds like a, like a sweetness, a uh, nice sweetness to it uh, with the savory, okay? And then so we're gonna turn up the flame. So when you're cooking, you know, definitely pay attention to, quick tips would be paying attention to where the pan is centered in, 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 uh, in, in relation to the flame, okay? People may have uh, electric, um, you know, stove and that's okay too. Um, and then uh, the difference with a gas stove is that, you know, you can dial up and dial down uh, the flame um, in a more efficient, you know, manner. So um, make sure where it's centered, okay? Um, so we did that, okay? Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to put in the red cabbage. And then we're also, there's some shredded carrots uh, as well. 
and then I'm going to put half of scallions. Love scallion. I like scallions on everything, on hot soups. Yeah. On broth. I mean, they're so on delicious, everything. especially the green part. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So in terms of cooking, for someone that is, you know, I like, I like um, teaching uh, people uh, to transition, um, you know, so going from more animal-based fare to plant-based fare. As a family physician, you know, we, you know, for those of you who don't know, we take care of everyone from delivering, you know, uh, your first baby all the way to advanced age, okay? And so we do a lot of uh, women's health, we do procedures, that's, you know, how we differentiate ourselves from internal medicine specialists, which both of us are both uh, primary care. So in general, you know, uh, we meet people where, where they're at, you know what I'm saying? So um, I like to teach on a spectrum um, and helping people focus and go towards, you know, more, you know, whole food plant-based and, um, you know, meeting people at where they're at uh, helps them to kind of, you know, focus that, you know, it's... Um, it's progress, you know, over perfection um, and everything. So, um, and so where was I going with this thought? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Does this happen to you a lot? Absolutely. Cause you're, you know, you're really multitasking here. Yeah. 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 Just, uh, just a little bit. Um, okay. So we got that. Uh, we have that going on. Okay. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. Do you, have you ever done a survey or poll of your audience, uh, Chef AJ, in terms of how many people are vegetarian, whole food plant-based, vegan? Have you ever done that before? No, can, can I do that on YouTube? Uh, you know what? If, because you have an email list, what you can do is a survey called Survey Monkey, or just going to like doing like a Google Forms. And I think that might, uh, that'd be very interesting um, to know you know, where does your audience fall in your spectrum? Um, but in any case, I like to, I like personally like to know because it gives me an idea of, you know, where they, you know, where they've been on their journey, um, where they're like to go and what kind of uh, stumbling bo uh, blocks um, that they, you know, kind of run into, okay? Um, so basically we're cooking this down um, and then we're gonna do the next thing. So. Uh, one of the one of the things that we like to do is um, in Chinese cooking we do uh, a lot of sauces and so uh, one of the, one of the things that we do to kind of thicken um, everything um, we use uh, sometimes we use arrowroot um, sometimes I'm using tapioca uh, to kind of like thicken things so what we do is that um, I put uh, just like a teaspoon um, it comes in as a powder. Um, and then I use a little bit of water. I can actually just use this broth. And so I take my clean finger and um, I just kind of put the powder in, okay? And then I just take, you can do water and you can do, um, and this kind of like rub out the clumps, okay? And so what this does is that, as you will see, pour it um, over everything. This helps to thicken things. So now you probably saw like, oh, it was a little bit soupy, but after um, adding this, um, you can help to, you know, thicken things. Turn on the flame a little bit. You ever thought about writing a cookbook? I have. <laughs> That's in the in the works. In the works. That's in the works. All right. So this is this is. Uh, and just taste test this. Always, always, always gotta taste your own food.
Oh, it's good. It's good that we do this right before lunch, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So last thing we need to do is mince um, some cilantro. So I have um, some fresh cilantro that's been washed and patted dry. Cilantro is great. Um, it's one of my favorite um, herbs. Um, and um, it's very detoxifying, very fresh. Um, Asian cuisines, we use this a lot. I use this as smoothies a lot, um, just to kind of, you know, freshen it. So in case you're wondering why I'm using a butcher's knife, um, it's, uh, I like the feel of this. Um, I, uh, I find it's uh, good to handle for my hands. Um, everyone is personal. Every chef and cook is going to be personal in terms of what kind of knife. Um, and uh, so, yeah. And one of the biggest things that we've learned in school was to always have your station clean um, as much as possible. If not, uh, the head chef comes in and hits you over the head. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you enjoy watching things uh, with other chefs? Like, I mean, like, you know, movies about like chefs, like Emily in, or TV shows like Emily in Paris, where their chefs are featured or food. Is I, 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 um, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. You know, I'm not going to be like the most critical, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's fun to watch. Um, you know, I, I interned at a, uh, at an Indian restaurant um, after school uh, for a bit. Um, and it was fun. Ratatouille is one of my favorite movies. Oh yeah? I love Ratatouille. Yeah. Okay, so we got our lettuce cups here. Um, okay, so we have this. All right, we're ready to go. All right, so basically you are Let's see, get a good angle. So you can make as many lettuce boats as you want. Um, and uh, like I said before, um, depending on how many party is coming uh, along. And then um, I have some leftover and the recipe calls for having like cutting up half of your, uh, cutting up half of your scallions. Uh, so I just do uh, the other half cooked and then the other half a little bit raw. And then we're also um, putting our minced uh, cilantro um, as well. All right, so here we go. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, that is spectacular. Oh my god, <laughs> it's it's as beautiful as I'm sure it is delicious. It's yeah. So you have to move further away, AJ. <laughs> I know. Or well, you know, you even if I over. even if I stayed in LA, you move further away, moving to Orange That's County because I was in the true. valley. Um, yeah. Cheryl, Cheryl would like to know: Are there any substitutions for the tofu? Mm, substitutions for the tofu. Mushrooms? That's a good question. 
like little little mushrooms? Maybe? I mean, the, you know, you could do a variety of mushrooms. Um, that's always good. Um, so I have uh, Bella mushrooms here um, because uh, they, they were out of shiitake. Typically, I usually cook them with shiitake. Um, do a variety of mushrooms, right? Um, what you can do uh, substituting for the mushrooms is if you're able to have quinoa, um, you know, you could do uh, a, cook some quinoa down, um, some yellow and red quinoa, and then do that with, um, you know, the, the varieties of mushrooms. And the reason why is because the tofu absorbs flavor, right? And so, um, you know, tofu is going to be part of, uh, you know, uh, you know, the legume family and all that. But uh, I would say quinoa is going to absorb. It's also versatile um, and it's going to absorb flavor. Um, so I would do quinoa. That's a good substitute. So I would do a variety of mushrooms, yeah. um, but I typically do um, shiitake. We've, we've got some suggestions from the chat. Janet saying cauliflower. Julia saying jackfruit and Linda saying garbanzo beans. Yes, they all impart their own different flavorings, uh, but yes, they can all work. I encourage everyone that cooks to experiment. That's the fun of it. So, <laughs> yeah. So believe it or not, we have some questions that were previously submitted. One is more of a chef question. One is more of a doctor question, but since you're a chef doc, you should be able to handle both if you don't mind answering a few questions. Yeah, shoot. Thanks. The first one is from... Doesn't say the name, but it's about leafy greens. Dear Dr. Zhu, do you have any suggestions for adding more leafy greens into your meal when you find them to taste way too bitter, even when they're steamed and drowned in vegan butter and cheese, which obviously defeats the purpose? I can't do onion or garlic, so it makes it even harder. Even after doing a 10-day water fast, I didn't like them. So actually, there's two questions in there. One is general about leafy greens, but one is when people can't have onion and garlic, I my hands are tied. Uh, but mm. I, will, I will just tell you, for me, what I've taught people is for me, like when you start out with something like a mustard green, it's really bitter. But when you buy like a baby green, like, you know, a baby kale, it's much less bitter. Yeah, exactly. Um Man, greens kind of span the whole spectrum, right? You got arugula, you got, you know, Swiss chard. Um, we work with, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, you, you can have green cabbage. It's not a leafy, you know, you know, per se leafy green. You know, when we're thinking of leafy greens, we're thinking of all the other ones. Um, I'm curious on why you would uh, do a lot of the butter uh, and the cheese. That makes that that's an interesting way of, you know, cooking it down. But there's so many different ways. Um, I actually, I don't eat a lot of salads. I find that it takes a lot of time to prepare. And then salads also take a long time to, you know, chew, right? To masticate. Um, you know, being a busy guy like myself and, you know, doing all sorts of stuff, um, I like to be as efficient as possible. Um, you know, as a chef, we don't actually make, you know, I don't know about you, AJ, but like, you know, I don't make grandiose meals for myself. I do things that are, you know, more one pot, one dish. Um, I use my, um, my ninja, um, you know, version of an Instapot. I know you love Instapots um, as well, AJ. Um, and I make a lot of soups and stews and things like that. So I, I throw in leafy greens um, at the end of cooking stews, gumbos, and soups, not in the beginning, uh, because then, you know, I'll just like kill off all the nutrition uh, from all the heavy cooking um, in the beginning. And I just kind of throw it in um, in the beginning. So if, for example, you're taking um, a mixed green like clamshell, right? Um, and, you know, I do it in one of two ways. I throw it into smoothies a lot. Um, so I do like half of my Vitamix is all greens. So you have the raw component, you have the, you know, the live enzymes. So it's not cooked down. So that's one way of doing it. Second way is I throw it at the end of, you know, soups and stews and gumbos. Um, so I'm not entirely killing it off. I mean, in the beginning, but I'm still retaining a lot of great vitamins and minerals, um, you know, uh, as well. Um, you could saute it with other vegetables. There's so many different ways to, to cook it. So, um, but I don't, I don't typically use a uh, vegan cheese or butter. Um, uh, so I hope that answers your question. That's great. Thank you. I agree. I love doing it like after the soup, right, right before you eat it almost not, you know, just put a few little bit of spinach or something in your soup. It's such a great way to do it. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to think about it. I like to do things where you just don't think about it and you just, you know, um, it's easier for me and I'm sure it's easier for my patients. So 
um, the less thinking. Yeah, uh, Cheryl's commenting that such great news you shared about the education program with Eric Adams in New York. And uh, uh, Kathy, who's watching live, is saying that she says lemon juice or a vinegar can offset the bitterness. Yeah, that that could work as well. Um, you know, uh, I I like to so you know greens. When I think of greens, um, you know, you could you could, uh, you can use vinegar to cut it down. Um, you could, you could actually pair it up with like mild, you know, sweet vegetables like peppers, um, to, you know, to kind of offset it as well. Um, there's just so many different ways. Um, I like to utilize other types of vegetables, um, to kind of, you know, offset it. Um, and when you're cooking it down, it doesn't, it's not as bitter, um, you know, depending on which one you're talking about, it's not as better um, after you cook it, you know, it tends to kind of, you know, go down um, afterwards. So, but I like pairing it with other vegetables. So. Great. Thank you. And here's a question from Janet. What is the best way to gain weight on a plant-based SOS-free diet? I'm asking for my 89-year-old mother who is recovering from hip replacement for falling off her bike. First of all, I got to say that that is awesome, though. Not, not that she broke her hip, but that, you know, that at 89, she's riding a bike. So I think that's pretty awesome. Oh, riding she, a bike. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that's how she broke it, if she did break it. She was healthy, active, and independent before falling and has been losing weight during her recovery. She's been whole food plant-based SOS-free since 2016. Should she add protein powders or silken tofu to her smoothies? Any ideas to increase her weight, energy, and strength? She's five foot three and 115 pounds down from 130. She's currently walking with a cane and she gets full after eating about one cup of food at a time. Should she force herself to eat more? Her goal is to be active and energetic again. You know, let's talk about, well, this is such a sensitive topic if you talk about weight, but I just, while I was looking at this question, I looked up the height weight chart of Dr. Furman and Dr. McDougall and Again, I'm not saying they're right, but according to them, Dr. McDougall, a five foot three female should weigh 104 pounds. And according to Dr. Furman, uh, 108 pounds. So is, is five, three and 115, is that too thin? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's so much to that question. And I uh, definitely encourage you to, uh, you know, find a lifestyle medicine provider uh, to kind of talk you through it and guide you through it. Um, I wonder where you can find one. But um, I would say, I would probably say there's a lot to that question because it sounds like, you know, uh, the weight kind of, you know, came off after she has fallen. And so after a certain fall, especially in an elderly person, um, not only with advancing age, we lose a lot of water content as well as muscle, muscle atrophies um, over time. And so that's, I'm sure that's why she's, you know, exercising is to maintain, right? Um, so when you have fallen and whether you fracture something or not, your ability to, uh, exercise, to move is really, really inhibited. And so, you know, you're going to lose a lot, you know? Um, so I would say in combination with a physician, a combination with your, you know, uh, whether you have an orthopedic surgeon or a physical therapist, um, it's very important to know, you know, what can be done within your limits. Um, but in terms of food wise, um, you know, having more protein, um, you know, uh, is, is a good idea. Okay. Protein powder. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of protein powder. Um, you know, I know that, uh, you know, it's a very controversial, you know, topic. Um, so, and there's so many different types of protein powders out there. Um, I would say you can, uh, you know, supplement, um, but I would do my best to kind of, uh, you know, consume as much, you know, from, you know, your whole food plant-based, you know, uh, lifestyle if possible. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not against supplementing. It's really about, you know, where it's coming from, what type of brands, um, you know, things like that, because there's so much uh, that comes with it. Um, but increasing protein is a good idea. Um, you know, but natural sources, beans, legumes, you know, whole grains, uh, soy. Okay. Um, mushrooms, mushrooms has a lot of protein. Every plant has protein. Okay. Um, just to let you know, every plant has protein. So, um, yeah, I would say, 
you know, increasing um, your affair um, as well. So, and then working with a really good physical therapist um, and rehabilitation um, specialist is also very, very key too. So, because a lot of it is attributed to the fall. So. Yeah, that's great. Well, God bless her for being so active, you know, at that age to even have that accident. That's pretty mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. So, wow, this has been amazing. I can't wait to see what you come up with us. I uh, come up for us. Can't speak. Come up for us. Oh, you know what I'm saying? What are you going to make yeah. next month? <laughs> I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, Adrian. Come on. <laughs> oh, pe people are asking again, what states are you licensed in if they would like a lifestyle medicine appointment? I put yes. it in the chat and I'll also put it in the show notes again. Yeah. So the states I'm licensed in, there's 10 of them. There's California, um, Washington, uh, Texas, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, West Virginia, Vermont, Florida, Minnesota, and Hawaii. Wow. Hawaii. Fantastic. Oh, that's a great mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. So that means yeah. if you decided to move to Hawaii, you could practice medicine. Well, I can technically, it's not about me. It's about where the patient are. So at the time of visit, you need to be physically in one of these states uh, for me to see you. Okay. So I can be anywhere else and still see you. <laughs> it's where oh, the nice. patient is at. Nice. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I'm so excited. To, I love watching you talk. So you're, you're fantastic. All right. Thank you very much. I'm humbled by what you said. So thank you to your audience. Um, I'm happy to see everyone next time. Um, definitely check out uh, my website. Um, any questions, just, you know, email us and, uh, you know, we are excited and looking forward to the next show. Thank you so much, Dr. Zhu. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow, one hour earlier, because Dr. Peter Rogers always has a bunch of slides and he's going to be talking about both breast and prostate cancer and how you can reduce your estrogen levels. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up.